The Rangers reward Johnny Brodzinski with a two-year contract extension. We talk about why it's a great deal for both sides. Plus, the Rangers run the Devils and their fans out of the Prudential Center with a 5-1 to win, their ninth in a row. You're locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 1011 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. So I want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we are, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So a lot has happened since we last talked. Obviously, we had an episode on Wednesday and Today's Friday. It's going to be our fifth and final episode of the week. And no sooner did I post our most recent episode, the news broke that Johnny Brodzinski and the Rangers had agreed to a two-year contract extension. So we're certainly going to discuss that in great detail here today. Also going to talk about a very dominant, very satisfying win for the Rangers last night, beating the Devils 5-1 to on the road and claiming their ninth straight win. They'll have a chance to make it 10 in a row when they play the Flyers uh, a little bit later uh, this week, specifically this weekend, Saturday at 3 p.m. But one to start with the Brodzinski news. It came somewhat out of the blue, but at the same time, you know, you see the deal being announced and it's logical. It makes sense for both sides. And I, I think it's a well-deserved extension for Johnny Brodzinski uh, to get into the specific details of the deal. Brodzinski and the Rangers agreed to a two-year extension worth $787,500 per year. It's also a one-way deal, meaning that uh, Brodzinski would have to pass through waivers if he was to be assigned to the AHL. I mean, that was also the case, you know, this past, heading into this past season um, on his current deal. But uh, my understanding with the one-way deal, even if that happens, uh, Brodzinski will still get his NHL salary. Usually there's a pretty big difference between what players make in the NHL and the AHL with those two-way contracts, uh, but that won't be the case. He's getting uh exactly what the contract says, which is 787.5 K per season. And I've talked very highly about Brodzinski recently, even before this uh, extension was announced. Just a very cool, very um, feel-good story. It's something that I tweeted out the other day, and I'll, I'll repeat it here for anybody that uh, might have missed it or just, you know, hasn't been on Twitter all that recently, is that, you know, Brodzinski has basically gone from a career NHL, AHL swingman and now he has become a bona fide third line center in the NHL. That's the role that the Rangers have him playing, and that's the role that he is currently excelling at. Took him some time, obviously. Uh, it, he's now at the age of 30, and it's taken this long to set basically new career highs across the board and actually stick on an NHL roster in an NHL lineup. Uh, not even like as a healthy scratch or somebody that might be in the lineup this night, but then out of the lineup the next night. Uh, no, he, he's become a fixture in this Ranger lineup. And that line with Brodzinski, Cooley, and Kako, as I've been saying, they've been a ton of fun to watch lately. Uh, Cooley's been pretty steady all season, but it must be noted that Capo Kako is enjoying his greatest success of this season while playing on a line centered by Johnny Brodzinski. That's pretty cool to think about. And coming into this uh, season, it also must be noted, Brodzinski, you know, I've, I've referred to him in the past as an NHL, AHL swingman. And to kind of illustrate that, kind of give you guys an idea of how much time he's played uh, in the minors, coming into this season, Brodzinski in his career had only played 101 regular season NHL games. He had played 297 career AHL games. So quite a bit more time spent in the minors than in the NHL. And the most games that Brodzinski had ever played, again, before this season, was all the way back in 2017-2018. The, the most games he's ever played in a single season in the NHL. He was with the Kings back then. Uh, he played in 35 games, so still fewer than half of the games uh, in the NHL season that year, and that, that's the most that he's ever played. His second highest total, again, before the season, was two years ago with the Rangers, and in that season, he only played 22 games. Uh, and as I mentioned, this year, setting new career highs across the board, uh, first of all, start with the total games played, 37. 
So he's, he's already broken his old record of 35. It's 37 and counting because, like I said, he's become a fixture in this lineup, and I don't see him coming out of it anytime sooner or really even at all. And, you know, looking at his other stats, tied his career high in goals in a season with four. Uh, he has smashed his career high in assists. He's got 15 this year. His highest total before this year in a single season for assists. Think about it. Take a guess. Think of what his previous career high was. This year, it's 15. What's Johnny Brodzinski's previous career high before this season? Two. Two assists. That was his highest total before this year. That also means, of course, that he has 15 points. Uh, that is also much better than his previous career best of just six points. Before this season, his high water mark as far as points was just six in a season. And obviously part of this, like I just mentioned, the fact that he's not playing in that many games year in and year out. But it's still pretty cool to see him, you know, obviously uh, exceed all expectations and, you know, set, set new career highs and obviously contribute to this Ranger team in a very meaningful way this season. Uh, he's also a plus four that also ties his previous career best. And his 11 minutes, 28 seconds of ice time per night is also his career best if we don't count the first season where he only played six games. And that last number might actually be slightly different because I didn't update it for last night's game against the Devils. But regardless, you get the idea, uh, getting more ice time than he ever has uh, in the past as well. And there was an article uh, from Vince Mercagliano, obviously friend of the show. He joined us uh, for an episode not too long ago. Uh, per this article, and listen, I knew that Brodzinski had been involved in a lot of transactions and, you know, called up, sent down, um, placed on waivers, all this stuff, you know, the whole nine yards, 85 transactions, 85 transactions for Johnny Brodzinski from the, sign that, from the time that he signed his ELC with the Kings until right now. Um, apparently, the Rangers and Brodzinski first were discussing an extension back in November. That was shortly after Brodzinski had been called up and obviously got off to a nice start with the team. Uh, the talks died down for a while and apparently picked back up in recent days because uh, lo and behold, he does have this new contract. And one of the quotes in this article comes from Brodzinski. I told them I don't want to play anywhere else. I love the team. Love Peter LaViolette. Love all these guys. Uh, I think it's a great spot for us. My family loves it here. So there's no place I'd rather be. Uh, it's a great article. Just kind of gives you a sense of uh, Brodzinski and his family and what they've all kind of gone through together. And obviously kind of the trials and tribulations that, you know, guys that are on the cusp of being an NHL player, but aren't all, all the way there, what they go through. Um, you know, they, they kind of, the article kind of outlined that they'd be moving around and they'd be over here on this team in this city and they'd have to move again. And it'd be him and his wife and his two daughters and their dog uh, all living in a hotel, you know, for, for a little while while they're looking for a new house in a new city. And now he knows for sure that he's going to be here with the Rangers for the next couple of seasons. Obviously, a trade could always happen, but, you know, it seems like the Rangers do value Brodzinski. I wouldn't really look for that to happen. Certainly not anytime soon. Um, the other crazy part about this whole thing to me and, and another example of how he's kind of fought through some adversity is that, you know, at the start of the season, Johnny Brodzinski was placed on waivers again by the Rangers. I want to say he's been placed on waivers like four or five times by the Rangers over the years, and nobody's claimed him. Nobody claimed him here. And, you know, the start of the season happens, and a, a lot of Ranger fans were kind of, or at least a decent amount of Ranger fans, were clamoring for Brodzinski to get that last roster spot over Tyler Pitlick. That obviously did not happen. But, you know, we fast forward a couple of months, and Brodzinski's here Nick Bonino has since been waived. Tyler Pitlick has since been waived. Brodzinski sort of leapfrogged those guys, obviously, in the pecking order, and deservedly so because of those players I just mentioned. He's very clearly been the best uh, of that bunch. And the other thing I love here is when that transaction happened early in the season and Brodzinski, you know, had a good camp, had a good showing uh, in the preseason and ends up getting waived, not claimed, goes back to Hartford. What did he do? Didn't throw a fit. Didn't pout, nothing like that. We've seen certain Ranger players get sent down over the years, and they don't handle it very well. Um, Brodzinski handled it great, went back to the Wolfpack, wore that C with pride. You know, he's been the Wolfpack captain for the last three seasons here and led not just the Wolfpack, but basically the entire AHL in just about every stat, had the most points in the AHL at the time that the Rangers called him back up, continued to lead that team and continued to play excellent hockey and just continue to grind and hopefully eventually get another shot. And of course he did. And he's back with the team now. And that's awesome. And, you know, he, he did well with the Wolfpack, obviously 25 points in 16 games. 
Wolfpack's going to need another captain pretty soon. That, that's a discussion we can have in a future episode because I don't think Brodzinski's going to be available to them. But 37 games with the Rangers this year, four goals, 11 assists, plus four. Uh, he's also 153.4% of the draws and uh, really feeling it lately. You know, not counting that Devils game last night. In his last eight games, three goals, three assists, and plus six. And honestly, I think he got cheated out of an assist last night. The first Lafreniere goal was listed as uh, as unassisted, but Brodzinski made that happen. And I thought he got his stick on the puck, but regardless, uh, Brodzinski continues to play well. He got some stick taps at practice. He got to break down the huddle. The, the Ranger players, his teammates, seem to be genuinely happy for him. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, the, there's a situation here where somebody, you know, gets called up, gets an opportunity, works hard, gets reward for it. I feel like everybody can, you know, pretty much feel good about that. This is what Brodzinski had to say uh, after the practice. Obviously, you know, he, he was uh, met by some reporters who had some questions for him. As soon as you get comfortable, bad things happen. So you keep pushing, keep driving every day. And yeah, I mean, I think that pretty much sums it up. That's what Johnny Brodzinski is all about. And like I said, he uh, should have had an assist in this game against the Devils. Did not get it on the Lafreniere goal. Um, but regardless, had another strong game. The entire Ranger team played well, but so did Brodzinski. And just good stuff all around. And I'm probably not the only person here that thought of this, but this extension for Brodzinski kind of reminds me of the Jimmy VZ extension last year. Just two players, high energy, high effort players. They work their tails off, you know, mostly bottom six guys. They can play the top six in a pinch. Uh, VZ ended up getting two years at 800K a year. Brodzinski, two years at 787.5K. So a very similar price. Um, they're both 30 years old at this time. VZ would have been 29 last year. Even the timing of the extensions was very similar. Obviously, Brodzinski gets his here in February. Jimmy Vesey got his uh, in early January last year. But just good stuff. Um, just a nice way to solidify the bottom of the roster with, with the extension of both these players over the past couple of years. I think it's another mini win for Jury and obviously a big win for Johnny Brodzinski because don't take it from me. I mean, just listen to his comments. He very clearly uh, loves being a Ranger, loves this city, and wanted to be a part of it. Sign the dotted line, and he's going to be here now for at least the next two seasons. Well-deserved, well-earned, and again, I think a really nice deal for both sides. We're going to continue talking about this Brodzinski extension in just a second, what kind of role he's going to play for the Rangers throughout the duration of the contract, what this could mean uh, for some other players on the Rangers, a couple of other things as well, and we will, of course, get to that uh, Ranger butt-kicking of the Devils from last night. We're going to do all that fun stuff in just a second here. First, though, we definitely would like to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked on New York Rangers is brought to you by Indeed. We are driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree that Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to recent, a recent Indeed survey. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. All right, let's go ahead and keep everything rolling here. Uh, for the everydayers, as I mentioned a minute ago, Rangers going to be back in action on Saturday in Philly against the Flyers, going for their 10th straight win. It's the second game of this mini three-game road trip that the Rangers have, and in our next episode, going to break down uh, whatever happens there between those two Metro Division rivals. But for right now, Keeping the focus on Brodzinski, this contract extension, kind of the ripple effect for the rest of this team, what it means. So something that kind of popped into my head pretty quickly. You know, first of all, I hear about the extension. I'm happy about it because I think Brodzinski has played well. It's certainly a reasonable price. I I'm happy for him. I'm happy for the Rangers going forward. Just good stuff all around. But you start thinking about, you know, other effects that this might have on, on the team, on certain players. So... One thing that kind of popped into my head pretty quickly, and in a way, maybe I'm stating the obvious here, but I, I think maybe part of the reason for this extension, certainly not the whole reason, because Johnny Brodzinski has played well and does deserve it, but maybe part of this, part of the reason why they get him under contract is that there's still a lot of uncertainty surrounding Filipino. Filipino 
was going to be a middle six center for the Rangers to start the season. He actually started with Lafreniere and uh, and Panarin, and eventually him and Trocek flip-flopped. And then, of course, uh, the injury to Hedl, the concussion, tried to make it back, wasn't able to do it. And, you know, again, the, the biggest thing here for Philip Hedl, health and safety first, all the best to him. Hope he's doing as well as he can possibly be doing right now in his recovery. Um, but it's possible that, you know, Brodzinski, you do this contract as a way to sort of have some insurance in case you have to be without Philip Hedl next year. And I feel bad even saying that. Like, like I don't want to speculate too much on what the future might hold. You've got people left and right declaring that his career is over. I'm certainly not going to do that. But facts are facts. You know, Philip Hedl has had a scary history with concussions. And if he's not able to go next year or at the start of the season or whatever it might be, you've at least got Johnny Brodzinski there under contract. And, you know, he, he's already showing that he can be an effective third-line center. So if Hedl was to make it back, I think for sure Hedl probably takes the third-line center role. Um, you could always put Hedl at a, a wing spot if, if you want to leave Johnny Brodzinski there. But I think they would put Hedl back at third line center. Maybe Brodzinski drops down and centers the fourth line. Uh, that's certainly an option. But um, yeah, obviously, I, I think the Rangers looking to shore up the center position a little bit. And uh, getting Brodzinski under contract for the next two seasons was a good way to do that. The other thing, the other takeaway that I had after that, and it, it's kind of a bummer for any fans of you know Barkley Goodrow out there, it's possible that the Rangers might be looking to move on from Barkley Goodrow after this season. We've talked about Goodrow quite a bit. He's obviously a heart and hustle player. You know, he, he wears it on his sleeve. He goes to work every night. He does the best that he can out there. But right now, uh, that contract does look like a little bit of an albatross for the Rangers. And it's possible they look to trade him. He's got the limited no-move clause where he can block a trade to 15 teams. Uh, maybe they look to, to deal him. Not sure that teams are really going to be lining up. And it's not because, like, Barkley Goodrow can't help a team. He can in, you know, in a certain role. But, again, the, the amount of money and the amount of years, it's going to make that a tough sell to, to trade him to someone. Uh, a buyout could be on the table for Barkley Goodrow. And it's possible that, you know, if the Rangers are looking at this, like, okay, one way or another, there's a decent chance that Barkley Goodrow won't be here next season. Um, again, having Johnny Brodzinski in the fold, that certainly helps. You've got another center under contract, and Goodrow can play any of the positions, but he's mostly been at center this season. So uh, to me, just kind of connecting the dots here, it kind of feels like, okay, we got Brodzinski. He's going to be around. If we have to move on from Goodrow, if we feel like there's no other alternative after the season, that's something we can do, and we can withstand it because we've got you know a quality, uh, mostly bottom six center at a reasonable price in Johnny Brodzinski. And as far as like the kind of role that Brodzinski's going to play for the next two and a half seasons or a little bit less than two and a half, I suppose. Um, for right now, I say don't touch that third line. You know, you've got Brodzinski centering Cooley and Kako, and they've been great. Um, you know, they, they just seem to go out there and buzz every single night. They fight for the puck like their lives are on the line. And as we talked about in the past, it does seem like Capo Kako, when he's playing not with the superstar players, becomes a more assertive player. And tends to play his best hockey. We saw it with the kid line a couple of years ago when those guys were still kind of on the come up. You know, they, they were all very young at that time. And we're seeing it right now with him being out there with Cooley and with Brodzinski. So I'm not touching that third line in the short term. Leave those guys together. Uh, we'll see what the Rangers do with the trade deadline. Maybe a, an adjustment is necessary at that point. But for right now, leave those guys together. And as far as like the role that I see for Brodzinski, probably, you know, kind of what he's doing right now, bottom six mostly. He can play top six in a pinch. Uh, I also get the feeling that, you know, maybe in a perfect world for the Rangers, maybe Brodzinski's on the fourth line rather than the third line as the center. I mean, I don't know that for sure, though. I mean, again, right now he looks like a bona fide third line center. Um, but obviously, you know, he, he can handle either of those roles. I, I think he's showing that he can do that. Um, also, I've noticed that. Brodzinski can play right wing when you need him to. We saw him out there with Mika and Kreider a little bit earlier this season. And to me, this is another example. We touched on this a second ago when we talked about VZ and compared that contract to this contract. Um, Jury's just kind of building, solidifying the bottom parts of his roster right now. The low-cost guys, he's getting them in place. It feels like with Drury, he, he kind of works from the top of the roster and the bottom of the roster first, and then he kind of figures out the, those middle pieces last which is kind of a good way to do it. You got to get your star players under contract. And, you know, the Rangers are paying a lot of money to, you know, a couple of different players. And and obviously, you know, between, you know, guys like Panarin and Kreider and Mika and Fox, th those guys take up a good chunk. Trocek, you could throw him in there. Truba, they take up a good chunk of the cap space. 
Um, but again, they're they're very good players, and it's the going right for those players. But then we also see Drury do moves like this, where you know he figures out, okay, who are some effective players that you know fit in well here that I can have on this roster for just six figures. And we see him, you know, give out extensions to guys like Jimmy VZ, uh, and now, of course, uh, Johnny Brodzinski. So it's kind of the way he operates. And again, I, I think it's a nice idea to get Brodzinski under contract. Just another valuable bottom six forward for this team that you know is going to be here uh, for the foreseeable future. But also with Brodzinski, I mean, going forward, he could still be in the mix for some time on the second power play, you know, in seasons to come here. So we'll assume as far as Ranger power plays going forward that the, the big five will remain together for the second unit. Again, we don't know if Heedle's going to be available. Blake Wheeler's on a one-year deal. He probably will be gone after this season. Um, so you're looking at a second unit of probably uh, Lafreniere and Kako. Got to figure they'll be out there. Uh, will Cooley, I think, will probably be a part of that, you know, that that mix there. Um, and then at that point, maybe Brodzinski and a defenseman, either Miller or Truba, whoever you want to go with. Uh, it's also possible at that point that Offman makes the team next season. He could be in the mix there. But Brodzinski's somebody that uh, certainly is in the conversation to be a member of the second power play unit going forward. Uh, we'll see how that goes. And, um, you know, the, the other thing, the only thing that you could really say uh, against this move, against this extension of Johnny Brodzinski is that, oh, well, you know, he's, he's 30 years old and he's going to block the path of some Ranger prospects that, you know, could otherwise make the team and may make a bigger impact than Brodzinski uh, could make. And th that's a fair point to bring up. In theory, it's true. But when you look at the Rangers, you know, the pipeline right now and all the centers that they have, there's nobody at center, at least, that, that's like really knocking on the door. The, the Ranger top three forward prospects, to me at least right now, in no particular order, Brandon Offen, Adam Sakura, Gabe Perot. Uh, Offen, he could be there. I mean, he's, he's with the team right now. And, um, you know, with Rempe possibly facing an extension, we'll talk about that later. It's possible that uh, Offman plays in the next game. We will see. Um, but, you know, he, he's the one that's really knocking on the door. Adam Sakura, I get the feeling we won't see him this year. Maybe next year's a possibility. Uh, Gabe Pro still playing college hockey. I, I don't think that they're about to throw him out there either. But those guys are not centers. Those those are their big prospects. The, the real top-of-the-line prospects that they have as far as forwards are concerned. As far as, like, centers in the pipeline – I mean, you look at the like the depth chart, the organizational depth chart. I mean, Riley Nash and Jake Lecision, no. Carl Henriksen, I mean, he's a second round pick from 2019. He's 23 years old, but, you know, modest numbers with Hartford. It's not like he's kicking the door down right now. Uh, Ryder Korzak is 21, former third rounder by the Rangers in 2021. Um, you know, five goals, 10 assists, and 44 games with Hartford this year. Again, not somebody that is uh, right on the verge, like, oh, he's done everything there is to do in the AHL, and they got to promote him. Uh, Bryce McConnell Barker, he's a center. He was a third rounder from 2022, but he's still just 19, and he's still playing in the OHL, doing very well there, but it seems like he's at least uh, you know a couple of years away from being ready as well. So as far as centers go, there's no Ranger center in the pipeline that's like, oh, a promotion is imminent. Like, they got to call this guy up. He's ready to go. That that player does not exist right now. Some of these guys might eventually get there, but Brodzinski, as things stand right now, and I would think certainly probably for next season too, uh, not really blocking anybody's path as far as playing time you know, for the Ranger prospects. So, um, yeah, again, to me, it's just a deal that makes a ton of sense. You could always go out. You, you could let Brodzinski walk in free agency after this year and go out and get a similar player to Brodzinski at a similar price. But if you're going to do that, why not just stick with Brodzinski? You know, he's here. He wants to be here. He fits in well with the team. He's playing very good hockey. I think the deal makes a ton of sense. Brodzinski's probably just thrilled uh, to get some stability, some longevity. You know, he's got the rest of this season, two more seasons to go. Uh, just good stuff all around. So, yeah, very happy for Johnny Brodzinski. Very happy with this deal for both sides. And in just a second, we're going to go ahead and shift our attention to this uh, shellacking that the Rangers put on the Devils last night. Uh, we will do that in just a second. First, though, we definitely want to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Ibotta. Grocery bills are so expensive these days, but now they don't have to be. Start getting cash back on your grocery shopping with the free Ibotta app, and get cash back every single time that you shop. Do you love making money, but also love spending money? Don't we all? Now you can make money while you spend it every time you shop with Ibotta. Spring break is around the corner, which means you're going to go shopping. But don't shop for your big trip and get nothing in return. Make sure you're getting cash back every single time that you shop with Ibotta. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta, 
by using the code Locked On NHL when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code Locked On NHL. That's Ibotta, I B O T T A, in the Google Play or App Store and use the code Locked On NHL. All right, so let's uh, go to some of the highlights from this uh, Rangers Devils game. Obviously, look, we we usually uh, when the Rangers play a game, we we spend the whole episode talking about you know whatever happened there. But I, I definitely want to give Johnny Brodzinski his due. Very happy with that contract extension. You know, the Rangers winning a game. I mean, they've been doing a lot of that recently, right? We're all used to this. We we don't need a full episode for this. But um, bottom line, uh, you know, a couple storylines coming into this game: Artemi Panarin, Jimmy VZ, both questionable. Both game time decisions and both ended up playing. They were both out there for the uh, you know, the skate around before the game starts. Um, the Rangers were prepared, though. They called up, as I mentioned, Brand often back to the team. Uh, Alex Belzeal has been and continues to be a healthy scratch for the Rangers. And once Panarin and VZ both suited up, obviously Offman and Belzeal were going to be the odd men out. But I think, you know, the reason for calling up Offman, you know, in the event that both VZ and Panarin could not go, well, now you put Offman as well as uh, Belzeal into the lineup and you're all set. You still have 12 fours and you can still, uh, you know, obviously play with a normal lineup. But as fate would have it, didn't take long for the Rangers to be down to 11 forwards in this game because uh, Rempe jumps onto the ice and puts just a massive hit on Bashan. Barely two minutes into the game, uh, Bashan goes down to the ice. He's bleeding. Siegenthaler apparently went after Rempe, and, and Siegenthaler didn't really want to fight him, but, uh, I mean, Rempe thought he was in a fight and ended up punching him. Um, so just complete chaos just a couple of minutes into this game, and uh, the Devil Trainers out there tending to Bashan right away. Uh, Bashan got off the ice mostly under his own power, and then he was back out there on the bench uh, to start the second period after missing the rest of the first period. So glad that it's nothing uh, you know serious for him. It's always a little bit scary. But basically what happened, you know, Rempe made a beeline for him and caught him a little bit with his elbow. It's hard to determine intent. Uh, they called it originally a major penalty on Rempe. They reviewed it. The call stood. And uh, of course that meant that Rempe was gone from the game. Uh, again, I'm not sure he was out there, you know, looking for blood, looking to give somebody a concussion or anything along those lines. We know Rempe's a big, strong, tough, physical kid who's willing to fight. And that's obviously a huge part of his game is playing physical um, but you know, the optics of it just don't look good when, when you get on the, he basically was just onto the ice and he lined up bashing from like a really long distance away and just leveled him and intentional or not. His elbow did catch Bashan in the face, knocked him down. And I know that this isn't really supposed to factor into the decision of whether or not to issue, you know, the five minute major and eject somebody from the game. Um, but when, when Bashan goes down the ice and there's blood everywhere, he's bleeding all over the place and he looks like he's in pretty bad shape there. You can't tell me that that doesn't at least subconsciously creep into the heads of the decision makers on this penalty, at least a little bit, you know, it's just a tough image to look at. And of course, uh, Rempe was booted from the game and the Rangers had to go with 11 forwards the rest of the way. He got the match penalty, the five minute major. He also got uh, two minutes for roughing, as did Siegenthaler after the two of them came together. So the Devils got the uh, the five-minute major. The good news is that the Rangers were able to kill it off, and that was a theme. This game basically felt like a never-ending power play, you know, one way or another. It just felt like the entire night, one team or the other, was shorthanded. The good news is that the Devils have been just laughably atrocious on their power play recently. They came into this game uh, two for their last 41, and they go... 0 for 5 on the night here, despite having this 5-minute major, and despite later having a 4-minute double minor assessed to Capo Caco, they got the 4 minutes uh, of that to, you know, obviously try to put the puck in the net. They were not able to do that. So, doing some quick math here, and I know that, you know, a couple of the Devils' power plays overlapped with the Rangers' power plays, so they didn't get the full 2 minutes, but you've got, between the major and the double minor, you've got 9 minutes of power play time there for the Devils. And those two were not interrupted. Those, those were the full five and the full four. So that's nine minutes right there. Um, then plus three minors, that's another six minutes. So that would be 15 minutes of power play time for the Devils to work with. And I know it wasn't, again, quite that much because they didn't get the full two minutes on some of their power plays. But close to 15 minutes for the Devils, they could not do anything. Uh, Igor made a couple of nice saves. But more than that, the Rangers just uh, played very well on the penalty kill. Penalty kill was on point. I thought Truba was a standout on the penalty kill. Trocek was making some plays out there as well. Uh, just good stuff all around. 
Rangers spent a lot of time in the box. It was just one of those nights. You know, the arm was going up early and often. It's a chippy, nasty game as well. But Ranger penalty kill, obviously up to the task. And, and the Rangers, that's been another thing during this uh, this whole turnaround here. They've been very good on special teams. The first part of this winning streak, the power play wasn't really firing on all cylinders, but they seem to have figured it out recently. They just look more dangerous when they're out there uh, in recent games. And getting back to Rempe here, as far as like a suspension, it's possible. Haven't seen anything on the uh, good old social media, Twitter. Let me go ahead and just log in real quick. I just want to see if uh, anybody has posted anything in the last couple of minutes here as far as, I mean, I would imagine there, there'd have to be some kind of a hearing. I, I don't know that we'll get uh, get word of it this early, um, but regardless, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. If Rempe is suspended, if he does have to miss some time, then maybe Brandon Offman sticks around. I don't see anything on social media here about him being sent down. So maybe Offman sticks around, maybe Offman gets back into the lineup. I'd, I'd love to see that. Just give him a little bit of a chance. Um, if that doesn't happen, then maybe Belzeal is the guy. Obviously, he's been spending uh, the last handful of games as the Ranger a healthy scratch. So they got some options. And um, obviously, you know, fingers crossed that Rempe is not suspended. We'll see how the NHL uh, looks to deal with it. Um, the other big takeaway from this game for me, Alexi Lafreniere. This guy has arrived. You know, there's times in the past where, whether it's Lafreniere or Kako or even Hedl, you know, one of them will kind of get hot or maybe even the entire kid line uh, starts to play well together in recent seasons. And we start thinking like, oh man, is this it? Is this the true breakout? Is this guy really here? Is this guy really arrived? Is he really going to live up to the hype of, being a first round pick. And in the case of Lafreniere and Kako, a first and second round pick or a first overall and second overall pick respectively. Uh, for Lafreniere, I'm finally going to declare it. This dude is here. He has arrived. If he stays where he's at right now for the rest of his NHL career, he's a heck of a player. And given the fact that, as I mentioned in the past, he has gotten better every single season that's gone by. It's been very gradual, but he has been doing that. Um, to me, the sky is the limit. He, if he, Again, if he stays right where he's at right now, he's going to have a heck of a career, but he looks like he's on the verge of going to an even higher level. He's played very well recently, ends up with two goals in this game, and obviously that entire line, Panarin, Trocek, and Lafreniere, just a phenomenal season. They've been buzzing every time. They've been out there in recent games, certainly this game included. Uh, we had uh, Lafreniere scoring a goal not too long after the Rangers killed off one of the Devils uh, power play opportunities, and you've got a four-on-four, -four that's about to start in the Devils' zone. This is right after the Devils took a penalty. Just a really bad turnover by the Devils that was uh, forced by the man of the hour here, Johnny Brodzinski. So Brodzinski basically, the puck is in the corner right after the faceoff. Brodzinski seemed to sense that Luke Hughes was going to try to play the puck around the boards behind the net. And so Brodzinski from the left wing spot, he darts over there to seemingly take that option away from Hughes. And Hughes sees it. So he kind of brings the puck, you know, back toward the center, the, the middle of the ice, you know, away from the boards. And at that point, Brodzinski uh, basically reaches out with his stick and just swipes it away from Hughes. The puck goes right to Alexi Lafreniere in front of the net, and Lafreniere buries it. And that increased the Ranger lead to 2 to nothing at that time. This goal is still listed as unassisted on NHL.com. So, you know, I used to work there. Maybe I should call up some of my old friends and see if we can get that change. Um, but, yeah, I mean... It's to, to me, that's got to be an assist for Brodzinski. Maybe they ruled that uh, he didn't quite touch the puck or um, the, the devil, you know, Hughes maybe touched the puck after Brodzinski did, which would maybe nullify the assist. But come on, that's an assist for Brodzinski. Get, give the man his due. He made a heck of a play there, made the whole thing happen. And then getting back to Lafreniere, his second goal of the night, this occurred, which is 39 seconds to go in the second period, made the score four to nothing in favor of the Rangers. Just a beautiful goal. And you've got Panarin, He's got the puck in the neutral zone, kind of circles back, passes over to Trocek on the right side along the boards. And man, these guys are just so in lockstep because the anticipation here was off the charts. Lafreniere read the play, saw what was happening, immediately started making his move toward the blue line and up the center of the ice. He knew that Trocek was going to find him. Trocek did just that. Um, and Lafreniere, a lot of trust there because he's going full speed. He's not going to be able to stop at the blue line to avoid the offside, but he knew that Trojek was going to lead him. That's exactly what he did. Uh, Lafreniere picks up in stride, gets past a couple of defenders, you know, right up the center of the ice there, a couple of moves. He kind of faked going left, shot it back to the right, just kind of flipped it into the net and made it 4 nothing Rangers. And as a quick aside here, just nice to see the Rangers scoring a goal late in periods. We know at times that's been an issue for the Rangers. Obviously, the shift after a goal has been a major issue. Sometimes they're not always at their best at the start or end of periods as well. So to see... uh. 
to see Lafreniere convert one here. Um, that was awesome. And truly a back-breaking goal for the Devils. I mean, the Rangers had total control even before this. But 3 nothing going into the third. I mean, you know, the Devils kind of still in the game. You never know. Um, 4 nothing here. Did anybody on the planet think the Devils were going to come back from this? There, there was no way. The, the Rangers just owned them the entire night. And to get this back-breaking goal here by Lafreniere uh, was awesome. They were trying to feed Lafreniere the puck near the end of this game. Um, weren't really able to do it. I mean, they got it to him a couple times. Lafreniere had a couple chances at the hat trick, but just was not quite able to do it. Um, but still, a heck of a game and a heck of a season for Alexi Lafreniere. Also got to give a shout-out to Igor Shesterkin. He continues to impress. Stops 39 of 40 shots. That makes it sound like he had a tougher night than he really did. I think a lot of these were kind of low danger scoring chances, but still strong night for Igor. Um, you know, obviously came through for the Rangers when they needed him. Came within two minutes or so of a shutout. That was unfortunate to see that get away. Also had an assist in this game, passing the puck up to Panarin. Panarin across the ice to Kreider. Kreider for the tipping goal. And Igor Shesterkin in February, now 5-0 and with a 945 save percentage. I think it's safe to say that uh, he has figured it out recently. Um, again, you just hope that the consistency is there and that we see the Igor that we all know and love for the rest of the season and into the playoffs. And then finally, wanted to uh, give the Unsung Hero Award. We're going to go with Jacob Truba. Had a big hit early in this game. Um, and then that was against uh, Bastion. And then ends up getting jumped from behind by Bastion. Still wins the fight despite being basically attacked from behind. I thought, as I mentioned earlier, Truba was outstanding on the penalty kill. Uh, he made a play during one of the PKs where, you know, the Devils are going toward the net. He just calmly pokes it away uh, from the oncoming Devil forward. Uh, the Devil goes and gets it in the corner, and Truba's right there to follow up with a hit right after that. And I just think that when a, a team is on a hot streak like this, winning nine in a row, playing with urgency, playing with a, just a sense of importance night in and night out, to me, that reflects very well on the leadership group. Look, I mean, the Rangers, at a certain point, they could get a little bit complacent, and they just haven't done that. They've been competing very hard every single night. They had that big outdoor crazy win against the Islanders. There was all the chance in the world for a letdown against the Stars or maybe even this game against the Devils, and that just hasn't been the case. The Rangers have been competing their tails off every single night. And like I said, when that's the case, when you've got a team that's playing like that and giving that kind of an effort every night, that reflects very well on the leadership group and specifically the captain, uh, Jacob Truba. But Figure we can call it there. Uh, if you guys would like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to lockedonnyrangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is lockedonnyrangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that is at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. I will see you next time.